Hey guys, what's up? Kelvin here. Today we're going to be finishing up our CCNP level overview of route summarization with a look into the node zero summary route. So in the past videos where I've been configuring dynamic route summarization in these protocols, and if you missed those videos, go ahead and check out the link to the playlist I have in the description below. If you've seen some of the routing table outputs, and in some videos I think I've actually explicitly pointed it out, there is a route to no zero. So it'll say 50.0.0.0 slash 27 or something. And it'll say is a summary common no zero with the no zero being the next top interface. And you may have been wondering why that's there. So the short answer to that is a loop prevention. The longer answer requires an explanation into how summarization works and the pitfalls that we can run into as a result of summary. So this is Kelvin in the editing process. I just wanted to go ahead and make an extra note that if you study administrative distance, you might have noticed that above external BGP, which has an AD of 20, you'll notice that there is an EIGRP summary route that has an AD of 5. This is what that is. So in EIGRP, if you have that is a summary, common no zero route, that has an AD of 5 in the EIGRP because basically what Cisco doesn't want to happen is for some other route, like say um, an eBGP route, to override the summary route. So in EIGRP, that has an AD of 5. However, that is modifiable in the IP summary address EIGRP command. At the very end, after you give the subnet mask of the summary network, you can have a administrative distance parameter, which will allow you to modify the no zero summary routes AD from 5 to some other number. But it is important to note that the default AD in EIGRP only so in the other protocols, uh, the AD is the same as those protocols as normal routes. So in LSPF, the no zero summary route has an AD of 110. But in the IGRP, it is important to note that that is different than the other protocols and that the no zero summary route has a special AD. And again, the purpose of that is just to allow other protocols not to override it. All right, back to you, Kelvin from 6 Minutes. So I won't actually be having a lab to enter commands and then demonstrate this, but I'll just do it with a OneNote diagram because I think that'll be sufficient. So you can see here I've drawn a little network. So I've got two routers that are running OSPF for each other that are connected to each other. And then on router two, there's a PC hanging off it. So you can see here on router one, I've got some prefixes. So if you watched our videos on dynamic routing protocols and summarization in those, you can see that this is actually a subset of the prefixes I used there. We're gonna try to summarize this. So in order to summarize this, we have to find the appropriate prefix length. So is a slash 31? Well, no, because that has a block size of two. Does it slash 30? Well, that would certainly work and we're gonna say 50.0.0.0 slash 30. So we know that slash 30 has a block size of four. So that means that its range is dot zero to dot three. So that works, right? You say, well, we've got dot zero, dot one, and dot two included in that range, which are three specific prefixes here, we're done. And while you're right, you may have also noticed that we have dot three, which rather one does not own. It doesn't have a loopback interface for dot three. So this is a problem because when you advertise, let's say that we advertise this route out to router 2. So router 2 in its routing table, which is what these red up arrows signify. So let's put a routing table up here. We're going to have O, and then we're going to say 50.0.0.30 via the next hop of gig 00. I probably also should have labeled the interfaces here. So sure. So this works, right? If the PC sends traffic for, let's say, 5001, it's going to go get matched by that summary route and then go to R1, and R1 is going to have a receive CEF adjacency for that prefix, and it's going to receive it on the loopback1 interface, and it's going to be able to respond appropriately. Great, right? But what if that PC sends traffic for 5003? That's not a problem, right? You think? Well, it's going to get matched by the summary route, and router one gets it, it doesn't have a route anywhere in its routing table because it doesn't have a directly connected route and it doesn't have anything for it, right? So that's gonna get dropped because it doesn't have a route matching it. So you think, well, where's the problem? Well, let's say that in our routing table, we add a default route. Let's say that this is a OSPF uh, originated default route. It's gonna have 0000 slash zero, 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 and the next hop is gig zero, zero. 
You think, okay, well, where's the problem? Well, let's go ahead and walk through the process again of PC of the PC pinging 5003. So it gets smashed by the summary route, goes to router 1, but router 1 has a route for it now because that's a default route. And where does the default route point? It points back to router 2. It goes from router 1 to router 2, then router 2 uh, take, matches it against that summary route, passes it back to router 1, router 1 matches against the default route. You see what's happening here? It's a routing loop because they're playing a game of hot potato with each other. Router 1 has a default route pointing to Router 2, and Router 2 has a summary route that points back to Router 1, and 5003 is getting stuck in between that loop, which is a problem, because what's going to happen is it, this is going to continue until the IPTTL on that packet decrements to zero, which is going to take a while, and we're wasting bandwidth while all of that is happening, which is uh, not ideal to say the least. So how we prevent this is by using that no zero summary route. So with the no zero summary route, what happens is the protocol as it summarizes adds a little route 5000 slash 30 is a summary and the next top interface is no zero. So you may think, well, what does this do? Well, let's go ahead and again, walk through the process 5003 uh, ping packet goes from PC to uh, router 2, router 2 matches it against the summary route, and when router 1 gets it, by the nature of longest match routing, it's going to say, okay, well, we've got our default route here, which looks fine, but oh, we have this route here, and it's the longer match, so we're going to use this route, and it says, oh, well, we have a no adjacency for it in CEF because the next hop is no zero, so we're just going to drop this. So that's how we kill that routing loop right there. We don't even start it because it never gets matched by the default route. Instead, it matches on that summary route and it gets dropped. Now you may be asking, well, okay, so what if we go ahead and I should also probably make this bigger. What if instead of 5003, it's one? Something that we actually have on router one. How does that work? Because if it if there's a summary route there, it's gonna get dropped. Well, we're dropping legitimate traffic. We're black holing traffic, aren't we? Well, hold on. Let's think about this. So when you assign an IP to an interface, you have some routes that are created. As a result of it, you have a connected route and you have a local route. Let's go ahead and focus on the local route here. So there's gonna be an L route for 5001-32. That is uh, that has the next hop of loop back one, let's say, right? So it's going to be listed in CEF as a receive adjacency, meaning that the router should process it into passing it on because it's destined for that router. So when this traffic goes from router two again, it's going to get matched by the OSPF summary route. When it gets passed over to router one, well it'll say, okay, this default route matches it, but it's not the longest match. This matches it, but it's also not the longest match. We have this directly connected, or this local route rather, that does match it and is the longest match, and it goes to back one. So it's gonna take that and use the receive adjacency in CEF to locally receive it and process it. So we're not black holing traffic. It just so happens that because we own the network, we have a more specific match rate. We have a local route that matches a lat very IP address. It's the longest match possible slash 32. And as a result, we don't even consider that no zero route. But if we don't have another route for it, and we would have passed it on to a default route. So again, with that dot three example, we get matched by this uh, summary route here that drops it and kills the loop before it even starts. So that's the primary purpose of that no zero summary route, to kill loops before they even start. As you can see here and in many other environments, you don't have the exact amount of prefixes to fill a summary subnet a lot of the time. So here we had three prefixes and the best we could do is a slash 30, which has a block size of four. This included one erroneous prefix, which if a PC or something ended up sending traffic to that erroneous prefix, on its own, this wouldn't be a problem because rather one would not have a route and would therefore drop it. But if it had something like a default route that routed it back to R2, now you've got a routing loop because router two is passing it back to router one. So 
that summary route works to drop the traffic again before it even starts a routing loop, thereby working a loop prevention. So anyway, I hope this video helped you to understand how that no zero summary route works to prevent loops. I hope you liked the video. If you did, go ahead and leave a like below. Go ahead and subscribe to the channel and turn on notifications so you don't miss any new uploads. If you had any comments, want to say hi, had any questions, feedback, suggestions, whatever, go ahead and leave a comment in the comments below. I love hearing from you guys. I love hearing from the community and yeah i'll see you in whatever the next video is hopefully not summarization so we've been on this for quite a while and yeah again i'll see you in the next video more cisco bye for now